Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. I'm glad you're here. And today we're going to talk about how to choose your color palette. If you are brand new, I hope you will consider subscribing to this channel. So when I did the intro to this video, this set that I have here, the Unison 120 half stick set was fairly new to me and I was describing how I had just gotten it and but I've actually already used it for some other videos I've uploaded so I just wanted to show you guys this is the same set that I'm using and I have used for the past oh maybe three videos it's a great set if you're starting in pastels and you want a, a little bit of everything it's a really good set to work from also thank you to everyone who has supported me on my patreon page it supports me and this channel to keep more videos coming thank you so much patrons and this reference image is actually from one of my patrons we have a page on facebook that's private for my patrons where they upload their own reference images and share them together so it's a great resource for reference images too and there's some great photos this is the resulting painting that i did and you will see in this video also stay tuned this is another painting i did from the same reference photo with a little bit of a different technique that's the next video all right let's get started but you know take a deep breath get you a sip of coffee and here we go in this example of choosing my color palette I'm using my iPad I use a little of both sometimes I'll use my iPad for uh, a painting reference sometimes I'll use an actual printout once you've been painting for a while you can kind of improvise with color but early on sometimes uh, an iPad or um, a photo on a computer screen it's more illuminated and sometimes you can see brighter colors versus a printout of a color which is more opaque First, I will be focusing on the colors in the vase. I've zoomed in so you can see it a little more clearly. Now, I'm working on like the colors that are in that illuminated area of the vase, and they're very teal or very turquoise, but I want you to notice that I added that um, almost an ultramarine blue in with that. Uh, we might have a tendency just to pick a turquoise color or different values, uh, lightness and darkness of turquoise, but without adding that blue. The same thing happens with flowers a lot. Sometimes you've got to add a color that's a bit more rich, and that blue is a little bit darker in value, and it's going to add that um, richness to the uh, brighter areas of the vase. Now I'm zooming in even more and I will be choosing now the darkest darks within the vase. And they're pretty dark as you can see. If you look to the, uh, just to the left side of my middle finger on the iPad, you can see a vertical band or area of darks. And I've pulled a, a dark, dark blue and a dark, dark purple. Again, I like to combine colors uh, to give more of a richness and a colorful punch so to speak and uh, just so you know this is considered local color i'm i'm painting pretty much what i see but i am intensifying the color now you see i got another value of um, or a, a shade of a purple but it's leaning a little more towards red it's pretty dark not quite as dark as the others there's a a nice little lavender you see that little strip of like the reflection in the middle of the vase it's not just white. Sometimes we have a tendency to go, oh, that's white. Well, there is some white I'll add at the very end, but it, it has a lot of lavender in it too. So I'm picking some colors that will be kind of in that little um, reflective uh, vertical strip that's there. Now, I also notice there are um, some greens in that vase as well. It, and it's very dark in areas. So you, you may have already noticed, I usually try to go with the darks first and then go from there. So this is like the darkest green. It's kind of a, uh, it is a cool dark green. And I'm gradually going to lighten up. I see some of the lights. If you look at the vase to the lower left, there's like some um, lighter greens kind of peeking through. But I, I want to be careful not to go too light too quickly. And now I'm looking at some of the values where my finger is pointing down there. They're, they're even darker and um, not as bright as the first values and colors I picked out for the left side of the vase. So uh, I'm just, you know, kind of also too, just pulling some colors I think I might want to play with. And this does help to keep you focused on painting rather than going back to a set or, you know, wherever you have your pastels and choosing colors um, all the time. So I, I work both ways. Um, sometimes I'll just work directly from the set and uh, pull what I need as I paint. All right, I pulled another little uh, medium value, kind of a a duller more neutral teal there too because I want to make sure I have some neutrals too and I'm kind of seeing that down to the lower left hand part of the vase there and while I already have a, a pretty dark purple I know there's going to be some other purples 
that I could use like that one I just pulled that could uh, really help in some of those reflective areas. All right, now let's pick out the colors for the flowers. Um, previously was real time, but now I'm speeding it up just a bit because you kind of get the general idea. Once again, I'm choosing darks first. And even though the center of the flower, when it's finally done, may not be as dark as the colors I'm choosing, I go ahead and choose the darks because that's kind of how we work with pastels. Same thing with these petals. If we zoomed this out and looked at the whole thing, our brains might tell us these are white flowers and we would most likely choose colors that are way too light. So lean towards a little bit darker and uh, then we can usually lighten them up as long as you don't over layer and overwork. So these are just the initial layers. And while the focus here is obviously on color, it's also on value and value is so important to make sure you get your values accurate and also too, not what our brain tells us. Our brain says that's a white flower. So I'm analyzing these colors. Now those are for those darker petals that are way behind, uh, like that broader pe petal you see right there I've zoomed in on. And you see how those deeper petals behind that flower are really kind of a deeper teal. And another important point to analyze when you're choosing your colors is where's the lighting coming from? And in this example, you can see how the petals uh, in the back are kind of uh, backlit, more lit than the center, like this flower I'm pointing at right here. Obviously, the source of light is not shining into that center of the flower because it's more in shadow. You can see the values are darker. And that's, of all the flowers, that little area that I uh, was just showing is the darkest center point and petals of all of the other flowers right there. So this is pretty much what I'm starting with. I think I do add um, kind of a brighter orange, just again for a little punchy kind of at that punchy color in the center of that flower. And I add a few more as I work, but I thought this would give you guys a good idea of kind of my method of choosing color. And by the way, thanks for all your comments. I know a lot of you guys are liking this overhead filming where you can see more of my choices and it does make it a little more clear for you guys. All right, let's start painting. Now I'm using a piece of Sennelier Le Carte pastel card. I really love this surface. It's very coarse, sanded, and I think it lends towards a more painterly style. If you're not familiar with what sanded pastel papers are, I have plenty of videos that go over the differences between unsanded papers and sanded pastel papers. And just so you know, like I said at the beginning, I will be doing the same painting on watercolor paper with a neat technique to make pastels work quite well. So stay tuned for the next video um, if you don't have any pastel paper or check out some of my other videos on how to make your own pastel papers. All right, so I'm getting started now, and what I'm doing is I'm just basically getting out a sketch. I'm gonna bypass this part real quickly so we don't have to go through that. For the majority of the painting, you'll be able to see um, part or most of my reference image that I actually did print out. I chose to work from the printout, uh, but I chose to choose my pastels from the iPad. So, uh, but my patrons, you guys, you know, you'll get the reference image in the post on my Patreon page if you want to use it. Also, it's on the private Facebook group for my patrons. Again, thank you, A.R. Mason, for that lovely photo. The rest of the painting process will be sped up slightly, and uh, the point or the focus of this video was how to choose your color palette, which I hope you, I hope that's helped you guys. And by the way, that was per uh, suggestion. I always ask you guys to comment. Please comment on this video. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you like to see. But I actually got some great feedback from you guys on the fact that you kind of like a video focused on a topic. Um, it can get overwhelming when you're starting. So the topic, of course, of this video was more on choosing your color palette when you start a painting. So, um, and also too, uh, I, you see I'm working on the surface. It's uh, the Sennelier Le Carte card is, uh, it comes in these pads like I showed that has various colors. I love working on a warm toned color, especially when you have a scene like this or a reference photo. This one had a lot of blues and uh, teals in it. So I thought the warmer color uh, would make just a nice contrast, a complimentary contrast to that. So, um, but anyway, uh, I am going to be continuing with the voiceover part of this painting that will be included in the Patreon version of this video. So my patrons get a little bit of extra content. Monet Cafe always gets lots of content too, um, but it's just my little extra special thing I can do for the people that um, support the Patreon page. And if you're not a patron, um, it doesn't matter because you're gonna get plenty of content here. I have over 200 videos on this Monet Cafe channel and I I've seen artists um, or beginner artists just learn so much from 
uh, the Monet Cafe channel. So, but if you if you are an artist and you're trying to get a little extra, or you just like the camaraderie, I mean, we I love our uh, our group and and we enjoy sharing together. You guys in the Patreon page, you get homework, you your homework assignments, and then there's drawings, there's um, awards you can win, gift cards you can win for art supplies, and so it's a lot of fun. But again, some people support it just because Monet Cafe is literally going to artists. Uh, or people who want to be artists and are trying to be artists all over the world in remote places where they may not even be able to get art lessons. So that's the coolest part to me about Monet Cafe. All right, so if you're um, a Monet Cafe subscriber and you're watching this video, enjoy the rest of this video to music. And uh, for my patrons, keep listening because I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the process. All right.
I sped it up just a little bit more here getting towards the end, but I wanted to make a comment that I ended up lightening it up more than it is, is here. I realized I had uh, some of my choices a little too dark. I mean, I didn't want them to be white, white flowers. I did like that backlighting and having the flowers a little bit more in the shadow. Um, but I do end up lightening the final a bit more than you'll see here. But anyway, I really had fun with this little painting. It was a nice way to just relax and kind of zone out. Do you guys ever feel that way when you're when you get into a painting, especially when you get past those initial phases and you've you've gotten things in for the most part um, pretty accurately? I just love putting on some nice music and just being at peace. And so I just want to encourage everyone to try to paint that way as much as possible. I know we're all very hard on ourselves as artists and uh, that we, if you're like me, I've got a real competitive gene somewhere in my gene pool. <laughs> and uh, praise the Lord, I've been able to overcome that just by realizing, enjoying uh, the friendships and the connection that we get uh, in sharing art together is more beautiful than the glory we would get from some sort of um, praise for our own artwork. And I guess that's why, I, I guess I'm sharing my heart with you guys here, I guess that's why I don't do a lot of contests and uh, I don't have time for one. <laughs> but I love, I love teaching more than competing. And I'm really grateful for this channel and for all of you. Now, here's the final painting. Like I said, I lightened it up some, but I did kind of like the, that little bit of a shadowy color on the flowers. Do stay tuned because, like I said, I'm going to do another video. If, if pastel papers are too expensive for you, that's why I try to offer alternatives. This technique on watercolor paper with clear gesso is way more affordable. So stay tuned for the next video. I love all you guys. Happy painting.